Hello. So in this video, uh, we're going to be talking about radicals and specifically types of radicands. Um, so this uh, idea of having types of radicands, um, which you know, we're going to sort of introduce in this video and then go through each of them in depth in their own videos, um, I just want to sort of make it clear that this idea of this type 1, type 2 radicals, um, this is something that I, myself, uh, have come up with as a mnemonic to help you guys um, draw the difference between them. This isn't a standard sort of math thing. Um, for that reason, you'll never hear, I'm sure, type 1, type 2 radicals in future classes. There's no point really in memorizing the like exact definition of these things. The point is to use this as a mnemonic to understand two fundamentally different types of radicals. Um, so just to be clear, uh, when we say type 1, type 2, um, this isn't a thing that we're going to be exam, uh, will actually be on exams or quizzes like, is the following a type 1 or type 2? That's not a thing we're going to ask. That being said, you do need to be able to recognize a type 1 versus type 2 so that you know what you can and can't do. Okay, So that's sort of what we're going to be doing in the next few videos. So in particular, we have the two types that we're going to be talking about. Um, so we have type 1s. So type 1 radicals, uh, these are radicals that um, the radicands, the part inside the radical, is already factored. In particular, type 1 has one term. That term may have multiple factors, but it has one term. So type 1 radicals have one term. So for example, You could have uh, a radical that looks like, um, so maybe it's the third root, and we could have something like x plus 1, x minus 2 cubed, or something like this. This would be a type 1 because it has right, the, the radical bit, but inside it's already factored. Okay, So this has one term, i.e., um, the radicand the inside bit, the radicand, is factored. OK, so this would be an example. Uh, another example, you could have something like the square root of um, x squared plus 3x minus 4, x plus 1 x minus 7. So this would be another example. Okay. Now you might note that this example, this can be factored. I will point out um, that it doesn't have to be fully factored to be a type 1 radical. So as long as there's only one term in this idea of separating things with plus or minus as the outside sort of last thing you would do to evaluate, right? So if I were plugging in an x, I'd have to evaluate all of this, which has plus and minus, all of this, all of this. But then the last thing I do is multiply. That's how you know that it's a, a type 1. The last step is mul was multiplication, not adding or subtracting. Um, so it doesn't technically have to be fully factored to be a type 1 radical. That being said, almost certainly you're going to want to fully factor it um, in order to actually do stuff with it. But you don't have to, and that's sort of an important distinction here. That's what makes it a type 1, is that there's only the one term. Okay, So it has to be factored, not necessarily fully factored, to be a type 1. And again, chances are good you'll need to fully factor it, but um, in order to be a type 1, in order to be able to do something, you don't necessarily have to. Okay. Um, okay, so this is type 1. So type 2, do this in a different color, so it's hopefully a little better juxtaposition here. So type 2. So type 1 radical, type 2 radical, I'm not going to rewrite the word. Um, so right, type 1, one term, this is not accidental. Type 2 has at least 
two terms, i.e. not in factored form. So again, for example, you might have something that looks like the third root of uh, x cubed plus 3x squared plus 9x plus 27. Okay. So this, you'll notice if you try to plug in, write an, an x value, you do this term, then you figure this out, then you figure this out, then you figure that out, and then the last thing you do is add them together, right? So there's one, two, three, four terms that you add together as the last thing. So this has four terms, that's why it's a, a type two radical, okay? Um, another example, just again to sort of draw a parallel and a difference between the type ones, you might have something that looks like um, x plus one, x minus three, plus seven. So here, this looks like it's a factored form because I do have a factor, a factor, uh, a factorization here of a quadratic, right? The x plus one times x minus three. But the last thing I do is not multiply, right? Because if I plug in an x, I do an x here, an x there, figure that out, multiply them together, and then the last thing I do is add seven, meaning that I have a term of this thing, this seven is a term, and this whole product is a term. So I have one term, two terms. So this is again a um, type two radical. And last but not least, there's sort of a very classic example of a type two radical and one of the key reasons I'm drawing this distinction. <clears throat> so if we did the square root of, let's say, x squared plus nine. This again has one, two terms. This is a type two radical. And this is important to know because as we'll see in our type two uh, radical discussion, you can't simplify that. So a lot of people, they see that and they immediately see two perfect squares, the x squared and the nine, and they wanna sort of simplify it down to x plus three. And that does not work. That is not a thing. Type two radicals, you cannot simplify, okay? Um, so that's what we'll talk about in the type two video. So for now, again, the, the key sort of simple but powerful idea that's happening here is you have two fundamentally different types of radicals. You have radicals that are factored inside, full, uh, not fully factored, but have only one term inside because they are some kind of factored form, or radicals that don't, right? They, they have two or more terms because they are not um, in some truly factored form, even if it sort of looks like it that having some plus or minus other thing completely messes it up, so it's not a type one, okay? And we have to handle these things completely differently. And it's really easy to sort of get sucked into seeing a type two and immediately wanting to do stuff that you can only do with type ones. So this should be sort of the reflex way that you look at radicals. It either looks like a type one or it looks like a type two. That should be the very first thing you think of when you see a radical, okay? So that, that is the end of the types of radicands. The next uh, couple of videos I'm gonna dive into type ones and type twos specifically and what we can and can't do with these things, okay? So that is that.